The CCP has already done great harm to the world because of its behavior related to the Wuhan pneumonia since 2019. And still now they are trying to expand their influence around the world instead of dealing with the internal problems. Most people know that huge sums of money from the Chinese Communist Party flow into world politics, but in some countries they go further than that. A Chinese immigrant became a minister in the presidency of South Africa last January. The minister in the presidency is a minister in the cabinet of South Africa and is elected by the president of the South Africa. So there is now a growing voice in South Africa about the exclusion of Chinese politicians. At the end of January, a Chinese woman named Xiaomei Harvard became South Africa's first Chinese lawmaker. South Africa is a country that has suffered from the form of racism called apartheid for a long time since the Cold War. So in South Africa, negative perceptions of racism and xenophobia are more dominant than in other countries. However, her election was not welcomed as a symbol of diversity in South Africa, but rather sparked the outrage of South African citizens. On January 21, 2021, Jackson Musam, who served as Secretary of the South African National Assembly, died of corona-related complications. After the death of the minister in the presidency, Jackson Musam, the African National Congress ANC selected Xiao Emi to fill his seat in the National Assembly, and she was sworn in on January 27. She was the first Chinese MP in South Africa and was a member of the National House Commission which established the measure for the C-19 in South Africa. Since her inauguration, this hashtag has been quickly posted and shared on Twitter. Many citizens have tweeted with hashtag no Chinese in the South Africa Parliament and hashtag South Africa reject to Xiaomi Hubbard. People wrote like this, she hasn't even spoken publicly about politics in South Africa. I don't care who the successor will be, but as long as we are under Chinese influence, we will continue to struggle with the CCP. China is a major threat to Africa, we are only the verge of collapsing into a new colony in the 21st century. Xiaomi came to the South Africa from Hunan province, China in 1994 and has since done various businesses including diamond mining, tourism, real estate, education, trade, healthcare, consulting, law and accounting as well, and most of it has been successful. And after marrying a South African man, she was a naturalized South African citizen and is now a minister in the South Africa. Of course, there are some people who think criticism toward her is racism and xenophobia. But Xiaomi poses a serious problem. Xiaomi is known to host business delegations from her home province of Hunan, China, including a wide range of United Front cadres. To understand what this means, here is the declaration of the work of the United Fronts by the U.S.-China Economy and Security Review Commission. China uses the United Front work to co-opt and neutralize the sources of potential opposition to the policies and authority of its ruling Chinese Communist Party. It also has an important foreign influence mission. To carry out its influence activities abroad, the UFWD developed overseas Chinese work, which seeks to co-opt ethnic Chinese individuals and communities living outside China. Today, United Front-related organizations are playing an increasingly important role in China's broader foreign policy under Chinese President and General Secretary of the CCP, Xi Jinping. She also organized a meeting of many South African figures in Hunan, bringing them together with United Front cadres. A 2009 biography by Xiao Emi mentioned her employment with the number 6 Ministry of Information Industry of the People's Republic of China in Beijing before setting up a number of companies in South Africa. Basically, she belongs to the Chinese Communist Party. For these reasons, criticism of her continues to emerge. Vuyur Vaz Jungla, president of the African Transformation Movement, tweeted, If a black person born in China can never be a member of the Chinese parliament, why does South Africa allow Chinese-born person to be a member of the South Africa parliament and makes a law for South Africans? There is a weakness in South African constitution. No naturalized foreigner should qualify to be a public representative. Only native South Africans should qualify. 
Anti-China sentiment in South Africa has increased due to the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative, and now a member of the Chinese Communist Party has been appointed as the Minister of the South Africa. The anti-China sentiment is heating up on the African continent day by day, not limited to South Africa. And the huge loans that Africa received from the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative must be paid back by Africa at inflated interest rates. In addition, the industrial infrastructure and natural resources of the government institution in Africa are being taken away by China. That's why major criticism at the moment is that China's investment in Africa is calling as a new colonialism. With this in mind, a reaction against the emergence of the Chinese lawmaker in South Africa is understandable. More worrisome, however, is that China is now investing even more in Africa than before due to the U.S. sanctions. On January 11, Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi made it clear that he would keep his promise to use the Chinese C-19 vaccine as a global public good. He said, I look forward to strengthening the Belt and Road Initiative and promoting Africa's independent development capabilities. Wang Yi also said, the China-led Belt and Road Initiative is building and upgrading infrastructures such as railways, transportation, and telecommunications in Africa. We will also expand imports of African products and connect Chinese and African industry trains. He also made a comment addressed to the United States. China and Africa defend sovereignty and nationality, protect legitimate development rights and support multilateralism. We reject all outside interference, and China will build a closure community of faith with Africa. At the same time, Xi Jinping also announced his position on Africa through white paper. Although the C-19 crisis poses a great threat to humanity, China will do its best to support global development starting with Africa, in line with the philosophy of the community of humanity. In the face of increasingly serious global challenges, Countries can only achieve a sustainable and stable development if they develop partnerships such as unity, cooperation, and prosperity. China ties China's fate to the fate of its people around the world. Of course, we don't know yet all the facts down the smallest detail, but it is happening all over the world. People around the world are becoming increasingly nervous and concerned about China's political over-engagement. China's immigration and use integration moves by CCP members in different parts of the world, and its spreading political influence is also too fast and too strong. In addition, there are the spies we already know who were cleverly placed in exact the right places. The CCP also has ample financial resources for these issues. However, we should always keep in mind that, like we don't hide all North Koreans because of the wrongdoings from the few North Korean politics and the Kim Jong-un. Neither should we hate all Chinese people because of the CCP's and Xi Jinping's atrocities. Like as Pompeo made it clear before, the Chinese Communist Party and the Chinese citizens should be viewed separately. Some people already know that there is an unacceptable thing from CCP but the most people ignore it because it doesn't directly affect them or their lives. But in the face of a rapid change and unpredictable events, maybe this can come to us too. As the result showed us in South Africa and the military coup in Myanmar, none of us knows how this will affect us in the near future or even directly affect our lives. The next video is about how the Chinese Communist Party interferes with politics in Australia and New Zealand. You will see that advanced countries are no exception from CCP. What do you think of this video? Thanks for watching, comment, likes, and sharing. Be safe.